What's going on guys, Biddy here, and here is my newest video. This time I am going to be discussing my experience at my second uh, mid-season showdown event that took place in Somerville, New Jersey on March 7th, 2020. And yeah, uh, it was uh, put together and ran by at Liberty Garden VG and at Mr. Olivola on Twitter. Shoutouts to both of them. Uh, Liberty Garden put on the stream and Oliver promoted and pretty much ran the event did a great job um, I'm gonna start off by showing off my team and then I'm gonna go into talking about my actual matches and all that But as you can see here, it's pretty similar from the team I used from the first MSS The main thing is I took out the Weavile Colossal gimmick um, Because I really didn't use it at the last one and I figured like why not like throw some mons I that will get actual use in there and that's why I put Incineroar and Durant. Now what I thought about going into it, at first I, I had a life orb Durant, you know, have so I could lead it with Toy Kiss and whatnot, but I'm like, wait a minute. I have swagger on my Grim Snarl. If I if I have a swagger Grim Snarl Durant lead, people are not gonna really expect a swagger on Durant and have a Lumberry. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Um, so, I, uh, made this Duran. I have a Lumberry on it, of course, for the Swagger, or for, like, Venusaurs that use Sleep Powder on it. Um, that actually came in clutch one of the games. And, yeah, I actually, it's 252 attack, I think it's, like, 180, so I made it so it's speed. It just outspeeded, uh, as speeded. It's, it just outsped Charizard. And then I put the rest in defense. And gave it a Lumberry, you know, it's for either the Swagger attack boost for plus two attack, which is just really good, or um, to like protect it from a T Wave or a Sleep Powder from Venusaur. Because, of course, this is Series 3, so Pokemon like Venusaur, Blastoise, and my sick teammate, Incineroar, were illegal. And yeah, I threw Incineroar on here. Um, just a good Pokemon, you know, good utility, fake out. It has Parting Shot. This is actually the Pokemon I used the least out of all my matches throughout the uh, event but it did have some good use you know intimidate parting shot came in handy i didn't run a salt vest on it because obviously i'm running it on mud sale so i gave it a iapapa berry i don't know how to pronounce that but nonetheless um pretty much the same concept i'm well not exactly the same i always laid grim snarl except one time i didn't but i'll get into that i pretty much always land led grim snarl and then had either Mudsdale or duran which was like okay if I want to try to sweep, I go Durant. If I want to try to like be tanky, I'll go Mudsdale. And then I'll just look at their team and see like, you know, which one would be more appropriate. And most of the time I had Togekiss in the back, and then I had either Gastrodon or Incineroar. There was a couple occasions I think I had both Gastro and Incineroar. I don't necessarily remember when, but yeah, no, it was pretty much just like looking at the team like, do I like and choose between Mudsdale or Durant, and then as well with Incineroar and Gastrodon. So. Had interesting like choices, gave me like a bit more like creativity on like who I wanted to have on the team as opposed to my last one, which is pretty straightforward. But nonetheless, yeah, everyone else, everything else is pretty much the same. I'm actually going to hop into a match. It's not going to be my match. It's actually going to be the finals from that uh, mid-season showdown. And then I'm going to talk about how my matches uh, themselves went and the event itself. So, yeah. Alright, so I'm going to talk about my matches from the MSS, and then a little bit about my uh, Premier Challenge after. Um, there were 54, I believe, entrants in the uh, mid-season showdown, which is pretty good. Not as much as the last one, of course, but it was limited on space because it was a smaller area. But it was still pretty nice. Uh, there were six rounds. My first round was a guy against Anthony, and he mainly used a team of Togekiss, Dragapult, Whimsicott, Conkledur, and then a little bit of Rotom and Incineroar, too. Oh yeah, he, he really didn't use, who did he not use even, I'm, I'm going over my notes right now. He really didn't even, he didn't even use Whimsicott until the last game, and I don't think he used really Dragapult at all also. But pre it pretty much came down to the last game, and his, it was like his Conqueror versus my Gastronaut, and I lived a Drain Punch with 1 HP, and then I Earth Powered him to win. And it was like, it was nuts. Um, it was also pardon in me if I don't fully remember the scenarios of like these matches. I should write like a lot of things down about them, but I mainly just write their teams, uh, what their moves um, are, and who they use for each game. 
Um, but yeah, th this is where notes come in handy and are pretty useful. But pretty much, I won that 2-1. Shout out to that guy. I was really, really close. Yeah, I'm I, I have all my notes written down, so I'm going to be going through that. Uh, round 2 was against uh, this guy named uh, Caleb. Or he goes by Cable VGC on Twitter. He's a hell experienced player. Shout out to him. And we also had a game three set. He, he his team was like Lapras, Gothitel, Rotom, Heat, Conqueror, Togekiss, Excadrill. Pretty, not too like in, in, like odd of a team. It's a little, little bit interesting com combination for me. Gothitel, Lapras. That, that's a combination that I don't have much experience with. So. Game one, he kind of messed me up with that. Game two, I adapted a little bit, did a bit better. And then game three, he switched it up and went ex Goodrill Togekiss. And then uh, he like kind of he didn't really run away with it, but he got the early lead and was able to like hold on to it. So he got that. I, I liked how he played though. Honestly, that was good. Uh, round three was against a guy named Gyro, I believe his name was. Uh, Arcanine, Rotomwash, Whimsicott, Beresciuta, Duraludon, and Dragapult. Interesting, interesting group, but I 2 owe him pretty handily, I would say. Um, pretty much, pretty sure I just, like, mudsdailed it for both these games, and he, like I said, like, he really didn't have much, uh, answer for this. Um, he, pretty sure he brought Rotom, uh, Wash too, which is just perfect for Gastrodon. Um, but yeah, that was, that was good. Uh, round four, uh, was against Kunal, I think his name is. Uh, Mimikyu, Incineroar, Gastrodon. Tyranitar, Excadrill, Road of Heat. So, pretty pretty interesting group. Pretty interesting group. The one I really don't have too much experience with is uh, fighting is Mimikyu. But it was pretty straightforward. Two matches. I believe uh, my um, Mudsdale actually lived uh, Scald from Gastrodon at 1 HP also to help me win game 2. It wasn't like a pivotal like moment of the match, but it was definitely... Uh, like, helpful, good, like, you never know what could have happened after that. That's why these, like, scenarios are so useful. Getting the range on your moves, if you get a bad range or a good range, that could change, like, so much. Uh, okay, so round five, uh, was a guy named Jack. I actually played him in the premier challenge at the first MSS I went to, and he beat me there. Pretty bad. But then again, that is best of one. His team was the first team of this kind, which I was expecting to fight more of. Uh, Venusaur Torkoal, like, that's a good combination now, especially for Series 3, because Venusaur just became legal. Along with Charizard, Grimmsnarl, Lapras, and Indidi. And I really, like, haven't fought many teams that have Indidi on it, but is not, like, a Trick Room team or something like that. So, I, like, wasn't sure what to expect from him. Uh, Game 1, he kind of messed me up, um... Like, not too bad, but he just, like, made a right play, and that changed a lot. And the game two is where I switched it up, where I would usually start Grimmsnarl in someone. I believe for this game, he started Starkle Venusaur. I'm pretty sure that I start, um, what's it called? I start Togekiss and Durant, which was, like, pretty interesting for me. And I, like, did Air Slash on the... Uh, I forget exactly. I'm pretty sure I did Air Slash on the Venusaur. I honestly don't remember what happened. I know I just did a different combination, and it worked out that game. <laughs> Sorry if I'm, like, scuffing, scuffing, like, my recap of this. I should honestly do these, like, sooner after I did it, but I was just pretty busy with, like, school and whatnot and everything that's happening. And then, so, we went to Game 3. Um, game 3, he started... Um... Venusaur Torkoal. So I was like, okay, he's doing the same shit. So I brought back Grimmsnarl and Mudsdale. And I went for, I was gonna go for the fake out. Cause I didn't, I haven't used fake out either of the games before with uh, Grimmsnarl. So I went for the fake out on Venusaur. But he switched out his Torkoal for Indidi, which set up the Psychic Terrain, which made the fake out not work. Because Psychic Terrain blocks like priority moves and whatnot. Um, so. He kind of cucked me with that, and then his Venusaur was able to put my Dynamax Mudsdale to sleep, and it was kind of a wrap after that. So, it was like, yeah, he got it. He caught me, like, I, now I know to pay attention to that for next time, so that's good. Shout out to him, by the way. He actually made top cut. I'm pretty sure he got, like, 5th through 8th. Um, yeah, so that was round 5, so I only had one round after. And that was against, uh, Taishif, I think his name is. Like, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. 
Um, and this was like, a, if you win, you have a chance for top cut. And his team was him on top, Winsicott, Mimikyu, Rotomwash, Dracovish, and Incineroar. Incineroar. Uh, game one, he actually won pretty well. Um, he used Mimikyu well at the end, had it in the back, and he was able to take out my Gashardon, like, really quick, and then had Dracovish also come and sweep up, so he did that well. I played a bit better game two, won that, and then game three, I switched it up, and I started, uh, the first two games I used Mudsdale, and then game three, I used Durant with, uh, Grimmsnarl. And he actually let, so this is like the most like what the fuck part of like his MSS. I start uh, Grimmsnarl Duran. He starts Incineroar um, Whimsicott. So I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Like using both these two to start. So I'm like, alright, I'm going to just try, hopefully, like swagger off my Durant. Since it already has minus one, at least get it because of the Intimidate. Give it plus one attack. And hopefully take out this Incineroar real quick. But then, as the, as it started, he didn't use uh, Incineroar the first two games. So, I Dynamax my Durant, and then he Dynamaxes his... <laughs> he Dynamaxes his Incineroar, and I'm like, whoa. I was like, did not expect that. Uh, he used Tailwind with his Whimsicott. I swaggered, got it off. and I So I plus one, and I went for a Max Quake on it. And it doesn't kill. He left it with like maybe 5% left HP. So I was like, oh god, this is it. This is it. Like, he's going to max flare me. And then he's going to like like run away after that. Because I'm pretty sure he was going to outspeed like the rest of my team. And I couldn't like T-wave it because he was dark type. And then he goes for max knuckle into my Durant. And I was like, what? Granted, maybe he was expecting me to switch out, but I feel like he should have been more like, wait, why would he switch out if he's going to outspeed me and just go for one shot on me? And Because you know, he probably didn't have Focus Ash. So he went for Max Knuckle on me for some reason, and then I just killed it the next turn, and then just ran away and foiled him after that. So that was very interesting. Uh, he didn't even, it wasn't even like a misclick or anything. It seemed like he meant to do that. But nonetheless, I won that, and I finished 4-2. and two. I forget how many. I think it was like 10 and 6 in games. Something like that. Uh, but yeah. So I went 4 and 2. And so like I said, it was top 16 CP. And I finished in 17th. So that was rough. Just outside of the CP. So I was, I was a little upset. But I was like, hey, it's bound to happen. I mean, and like, it's happened to plenty of other people, I'm sure. But so what may, what was the, what the main factor was is this thing called resistance. Where... Um, what settles tiebreakers? Like, there were multiple people that were 4 and 2. It was like 15 to 20 people that went 4 and 2. But what separates, like, who gets the higher placing and lower is resistance, which is your opponent's win percentage. Now, the things that's like can jank this up is if your opponents from earlier, earlier rounds, if they drop, then your opponent win percentage will probably be lower because they're not going to be playing, so they're not going to be winning. And that's what happened to me. My round one, and I believe my round three. Either my round three or four. They both dropped, which kind of cucked my resistance. And then I like finished with like only 45% win resistance. And I just, like, yeah, I didn't make it. Um, so that was rough. Uh, but, like, hey, it's all part of the process. It's part of the competing in this game. But nonetheless, I still had a good time. It was pretty pretty chill. And they were doing a PC after. So, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm not doing anything. Might as well try it out. And it's like I said, it's best of ones. There was 25 entrants, which meant top 8 CP, which is pretty dope. Because it has to be 24 or more to be top 8. And in that, I went 3-2. and two. And one of my opponents, like, he told me that he was going to drop. So I'm like, ah, great. Now my resistance is lower. But we finished, went 3-2. and two. But luckily, two of the other guys I lost to finished, like, 4-1 and one and 5-0. and oh. So that helped. And I actually made top cut. I finished 7th out of the top 8. So I was like, yo, that's lit. Um, one of the teams I played, like, in the, in the first rounds, he actually used a Gigantamax or Beetle team. And I was like, whoa. whoa. I, I didn't even know what G-Max or Beetle's move did. But it, like, did the G-Max Gravitas or whatever. And then, it, like, he started off with Ninetales, which had Hypnosis. So, with the gravity out, Hypnosis was, of course, going to hit. And I was like, oh, 
All right, you got it. Um, but that was interesting. I think that guy ended up getting second. Um, but yeah, so I went on to the top cut. That was my first time top cutting, which I'm pretty happy about. And I played uh, this guy Chuppa, I believe Chuppa VGC. He goes by on Twitter. And his team was Tyranitar, Excadrill, Dragapult, Incineroar, Rotom Wash, and Togekiss. And when I see a team like this, I'm like, okay, he really does not have anything that can shut down uh, Mudsdale. His main thing was Rotom Wash, and I have Gastrodon for that. So I just used Mudsdale both games, and then game two, I kind of like ran away with it early, took out his Togekiss, literally Swagger took out his Togekiss turn one with a Rockfall, and it was pretty much a wrap after that. And like, he like, like, forfeited a couple turns after he's like, yeah, I don't have anything for Mudsdale. I'm like, yeah, be like that. So I won that 2-0, and I moved on to top four. So I was like, well, only two more, and I could win? That's sick. Uh, and then my round two was against this guy named Connor, who I actually played in the uh, first few rounds of the PC. I think he was like my fourth round. Yeah, I think I, I won my first three, then I lost to him. Oh no, I won my first two, then I lost to him, then I lost to another guy, and then I won my last round. That's how I won. But this was my round three in the uh, Swiss pools for the PC. Uh, he, his team was Surfetched, Jellicent, Togekiss, Grimmsnarl, Chandelure, and Togenum Heart. You see how much like creativity there there is in a lot of these teams? It's pretty sick. That's why I'm like enjoying this game a lot. There's so much like stuff you can wor like work around with. Um, but yeah, his Surfetch is what definitely caught me off pretty hard. It was really strong. It carried Leak, which of course increased its crit chance, and it had Leaf Blade. So he literally just took. I like. I really couldn't even use Gastrodon. Uh, but yeah, no, he just played it well. Game, it actually, that one actually went to game three. Uh, I played game two a lot better, took out his surf fetch pretty fast, but then, uh, game three he played around, like, he played around his surf fetch better, kept it alive longer, and he just ran away with it. Um, but yeah, so I lost to him game three. I ended up getting fourth, which got me 12 CP, so, woo! 32 out of 400. Oh, granted, I was... Literally one place from being at 52. Uh, but you know, what are you going to do? That's uh, it's all part of the process. But you know, I had a great time. Again, shout outs to Mr. Olivano. I believe that's how you pronounce it. I apologize. But um, his Twitter, um, the Liberty Garden VG's Twitter, their Twitch. You can check the stream there. All that will be in the description down below. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, uh, granted, I'm going to be doing these more in the future when I go to more events, and they will be better than this, I apologize. Um, but expect more videos soon. I'm trying to get more, like, gameplay videos of using, like, different Pokemon stuff. Uh, Pokemon. I have some interesting concepts already. And I have other, like, interesting video ideas where I may go in-depth about, like, some of the processes of, like, competing in this game. And maybe how, like, it can relate to, like, competing against Smash Bros since like that's where I'm mainly coming from. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, comment, sub, blah, blah, blah. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.